Although the K50 Gaming Edition has been released, that was just a preview of the K50 series. The most notable of the K50 series are the standard and the pro versions. That's why we also bought these two phones right away. First, this video we will look at the K50 Pro. I believe that after you watch this review, you will be amazed that such a powerful phone is only sold for 470. The first flagship killer of 2022 has finally made its debut. Also, we have a little treat for our fans. Do you know the Air Dot 3 Pro Genshin Impact Edition? Subscribe to our channel and click on the link below for a chance to get this cute little bag and earbuds for free. Genshin fans, do not miss out. Like last year's K40 series, this year's K50 Pro Black version uses a different pattern design for the back cover than the other color versions. The back cover will have a crystalline pattern that shines under the reflection of light. Redmi says it's inspired by the olive and terite. It's very beautiful. And if you are unfortunate to break the back cover glass, maybe this pattern can also cover up your broken back cover. But this lens module I think is not very good looking. There are circles and triangles in the rectangle which doesn't look harmonious. The lens design seems to have been seen on other phones. It has NFC, IR blaster, and stereo duo speakers, but the bezel is still made of plastic. And the fingerprint recognition is also on the bezel. All in all, you cannot doubt the functionality of K50 Pro, but the look and design is not as good as the K40 series. The main thing I don't like is the design of the lens. Although its back design has taken a step backwards, its front is really very good. I mean the specs on paper. Finally, the Redmi uses a 2K resolution OLED screen as well. This is probably the cheapest 2K OLED screen phone you can buy. And it performs well both in terms of viewing angle and maximum brightness. The lower bezel is also very narrow. Honestly, the screen quality of K50 Pro is very close to that of the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Even without interference of micro lens technology, the K50 Pro has even better side view color shift control than the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Although it doesn't have LTPO, which is very popular this year, it has full scene DC deeming and adaptive colors, two features that make the screen less irritating to the eyes. The screen is surrounded by a plastic holder, which is a 2K straight screen Realme GT2 Pro does not have. The shape of the film at the hole punch is also very strange. It is actually water drop shaped, but just from the experience of using it, the K50 Pro screen should be second only to the top flagship phones of various brands. Very good. If you buy the K50 series, remember to go to the display settings and set the resolution to 2K because the default resolution is FHD+. I know that everyone is fed up with the Snapdragon Agent 1 that is on fire and everyone was expecting MediaTek's Dimensity 9000 to save Android flagship phones from the fire. The K50 Pro being the first Dimensity 9000 phone we tested, we of course had to take a closer look at its performance. Antutu 950,000 points, 3D Mark 7,900, Geekbench 5 single core 1,300, multi core 4,400, and is also passed the 3D Mark stress test without any problems, much better than Agent 1 phones that couldn't even complete the test. The heat sink material used is the exactly same stainless steel VC as the K50 Gaming Edition. Thanks to the battery processor, the Genshin Impact was able to maintain a high frame rate for a long time. And only twice in 20 minutes of gaming did the frame rate lock at 45 FPS. The maximum temperature was only 46 degrees Celsius, and the power consumption was not much. Sounds pretty good, right? But that's because the early system versions reduced the resolution of Genshin. After updating to the latest system version, the resolution is back to the normal level but the average FPS decreased. The FPS locked at 45 and the temperature increased. The advantage of Dimensity 9000 was only maintained for 10 minutes. That doesn't sound good. The frame rate curve in Bright Rage, which focuses on GPU performance, is not much different from other Agent 1 phones. And the temperature reaches 50 degrees Celsius. It can be seen that Dimensity 9000 will have a better experience on short gaming sessions compared to Agent 1. But once the game time becomes longer, the K50 Pro does not have a clear advantage. If you think the gaming experience of K50 Pro is not good enough, 
you can look forward to the K50 Standard Edition. Because based on the performance of Dimensity 8100 samples foam made by MTK, it is possible that its gaming experience will be better than Dimensity 9000. The K50 Pro is also the first Redmi phone to use OIS, which has improved the photo quality of 108 megapixel main camera in low light. Combined with the ISP Boost, you can see a lot of detail in the samples even when the environment is very dark. In most cases, it performs much better than Redmi Note 11 Pro China version, which is also 108 megapixel, especially in terms of dynamic range, but like other Redmi phones, the exposure will be slightly lower than the other brands. The ultra wide angle camera is like any other budget phone. There's a purple fringing issue, and this issue is also different from other phones. The K50 Pro not only has a purple line at the edge of the picture, it also has a green line and this problem is very likely to occur. There's also a lot of noise when the light is bad. Overall, its main camera has a good photo performance, upper mid class, but the ultra wide angle camera is not good enough. But it is not a phone designed for people who like to take pictures. So this camera performance is considered to reach the pass line. The Dimensity phones we have tested before have been underperforming in terms of video recording. And finally, the K50 Pro's video performance is satisfactory. The main camera supports up to 4K, 30fps, and the ultra-wide angle camera supports up to 1080p, 30fps. Main camera support OIS plus EIS. Clarity and stability are good. Although the K50 Pro is also a stereo dual speaker, the JBL logo does not appear on its phone. Compare the K50 Gaming Edition with JBL's four unit speakers, and you will hear who performs better. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely out of sight. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase and lead. I had mentioned in the Xiaomi 12 Pro review that the Surge P1 chip allows a 120 watt phone to do a large capacity battery. But many people still complain that 4,600 million per hour battery capacity is still too small. So Redmi has finally brought out the full strength of the Surge P1 chip this time, achieving the unbeatable combination of 5,000 million per hour plus 120 watt charging power. Compared to Xiaomi 12 Pro, which also uses Surge P1, but with the 400 million per hour less, it charges 31% in five minutes, 62% in 10 minutes, and it's fully charged in 19 minutes. Not only does it charge fast, it also consumes less power. Combined with the power consumption data from the previous gaming section, the game consumes much less power than Agent One phone. It seems that one of the reasons for the K50 Pro's super long battery life is the Dimensity 9000. Imagine you can get a phone like this for only $470, top of the line performance, good gaming experience, super fast 120 watt charging, and a big 5000 million per hour battery. The most important thing is to have excellent 2K resolution OLED screen. In today's world where flagship phones are getting more and more expensive with lower and lower specs, 
only Redmi still insists on making the ultimate cost-effective phone. This is the phone that consumers want to see the most. But I actually care more about the Redmi K50 Standard Edition than the K50 Pro. Although it starts at 100 less, the core specs is not much changed. Don't forget to follow our channel, we will be uploading the review of K50 Standard Edition soon, and don't forget the free Redmi Genshin Edition earbuds you can get. Here's Will from Gizmo China, and we will see you next time.